Welcome to this video on React Router. My name's Carl Rippon and I'm going to go through the features in version 6. And what we're going to do is take a React Router 5.1 application, we're going to migrate it to 6 and we're going to drill into all the new features. Just a heads up before we get started, this video is sponsored by LogRocket. And if you've not heard of LogRocket before, it provides sophisticated monitoring for front ends. So it not only tracks bugs that our users are experiencing, but it allows us to replay them. And that means we're not wasting time trying to reproduce bugs. So in the playback, we get access to all the user's network requests and we can get the ability to inspect the requests and the responses. If our front end is using Redux, we can inspect the Redux store in the playback as well. And the cool thing is that it's framework agnostic, so it's going to work in just about any front end that we're developing. So LogRocket is an amazing tool, well worth checking out. You can hit the link at the top right of this video and you can get 14 days for free. Back to React Router then. So we've got our app, we've got the code on the left hand side, React Router 5.1, and on the right hand side we've got a nav bar. And as we click the links, you can see that the path is changing. That's what React Router is doing for us. We've got a little search feature so we can put something in there and we can see the effect that that has on the path. And we can drill into products as well and go to a deeper path and click the buy button and go to an even deeper path. So we're using some of the common features of React Router there. So before we dive into React Router 6, let's just have a look at the React Router 5.1 code that we've used to build that. So starting with the top level routes there in our app components, we're importing browser router, switch and root components. And we've alias browser router with router and we're gonna put that right at the top of our component tree. We put all the roots in an app roots component. You can see them there in a switch component. All the different root components go into the relevant paths. We've got deeper links in the products component, so let's have a look at that. And you can see we're importing the link component to go to those deeper links, and we're also using use history and use location. And going further down, you can see that we're using use location to get the search parameter from the path, and we're going to put that in some state. And we're using the use history hook to programmatically navigate to a different path, which will in turn invoke the search. So let's have a look at the product component now to see how we're dealing with that root parameter and also that buy button. We're importing lots of different stuff from React Router. We're using the use params hook to get the ID from the path. We're using the use root match hook to form that path to that buy path. And we're using the use history hook to programmatically navigate to that buy path when the button is clicked. Okay, now that we understand the code for 5.1, let's upgrade it to 6. So we'll npm install both the React Router DOM packages and the core React Router package. And when that's complete, we'll see the versions updated in our package JSON. So let's start the app and see what happens. And you can see we get an error and that's because React Router 6 isn't backwards compatible with React Router 5. As you'll see, it's not a lot of work to resolve these issues and actually the new bits and pieces that we get are super cool. So let's get to work then and we'll start by resolving the issues and then we'll drill in more to the new features and start to get a good understanding of how version 6 is working. So looking again at the error, and it's saying that switch no longer exists in React Router, which is exactly right. There is a new component called roots that we use instead of switch. Hey, are you tired of recreating bugs in your React apps? If so, click on any of the links in the top right of this video to get a free trial of LogRocket. LogRocket is a React monitoring solution that helps you track Redux state, automatically surface JavaScript errors, and monitor slow network requests in component load times. Enjoy the rest of the video. So let's go and use that. So we'll go over to the app component and we're going to import roots instead of switch. And then we're going to use roots instead of switch in our JSX. And if we save that file, that problem goes away, but we've got the same problem in the product file. So let's quickly go and make changes there as well. So if we save that problem's resolved, but now we get a problem with use history. And use history has actually been removed and replaced with use navigation, which is a more specific way 
of allowing us to programmatically navigate to different places. So let's go and use that. The use navigate is also suspense ready. So when that comes in React, we are going to be all good. So let's go over to our products component. We're going to import use navigate instead of use history. And we're going to call use navigate instead of use history. And what's returned is going to be a function. And we're going to call that function navigate. And this function simply navigates to where we want to. So we're going to use that instead of calling history.push. And if we save that change, we get exactly the same problem in the product component. So let's quickly make the change there as well. And now if we save, we get a different problem with use root match. And this has actually been removed from React Router 6 because we no longer need it. And this is because the new roots component automatically does relative matching. So we're going to remove use root math from our import. And then down in our path to our by path, we're going to use a relative path now. And that feels a lot cleaner, a lot simpler. And actually all our compilation errors have gone away now. But is the app actually functioning correctly? Well, let's go and have a look. And we're on the home page and we can see the home page caption has gone. So something's not quite right there. But the other top level links do seem to work. So customers, suppliers, products seems to work. The search even seems to work on products. But when I click on a product, that doesn't appear to work. And you can see I've got a warning there in the dev tools. Now, one of the new features of React Router 6 is the element prop on a root component. And this allows us to define the component that should be rendered when that path is hit. So the root children component still kind of works as we've seen with some of those paths. And we'll use that later on to do a nested layout. But for now, we're going to change all those definitions to use the element prop. And we're going to do exactly the same for the root components in our product component. And we can see straight away that our product component is starting to function correctly. And if we go back to our home page, that is good as well. And all the other paths work nicely as well, including the search. But notice we're still getting that warning in the dev tools on the product component. But if you have a look, it is really calling out what we need to do to resolve the problem now. And the reason why we're getting the problem is that all routes do an exact match now. So for a nested route, we need to put a trailing star on the end. Hey, it's me again. Do you hate wasting time recreating bugs in your apps? If so, click on any of the links in the top right of this video to get a free trial of LogRocket. LogRocket is a front-end application monitoring solution that helps you debug issues faster, identify performance problems, and create better user experiences. Enjoy the rest of the video that on our route to our product and now if we give that a test that is functioning perfectly fine so let's try a nested layout now where we want to show the list of products and the selected product on the same page so we're going to start by nesting the product route inside the products route and if we try that the products still render okay but then when we click on a product we don't get anything and this is because the products component now needs to say where that nested layout needs to render. And we can do exactly that with a new component called outlet. So before we do that, let's make a quick change here on our root components because remember now they are relative. So we don't need that preceding slash there. So let's quickly remove those. And also we only need the ID to the path to our product as well. And if we test that, everything's still working fine, but obviously our nested product is still not showing now. So let's fix that. And as I said, we can fix that with a new Outlook component. So let's import that from React Router. And then we're just going to plonk it at the bottom of our JSX. And if we give that a try, clicking on a product now shows that product beneath the product list, which is exactly what we wanted. So before we wrap up, we're going to look at one final feature, which is the ability to define our roots in JSON rather than in JSX, which we're using now. And we do that using a use roots hook. So let's import that into our 
app file and then we're going to go down to our JSX roots and we're going to comment that out and instead we're going to use use roots and this takes in an array as a parameter and it's an array of objects with a pref property and an element property so very similar structure to JSX but instead it's JSON so after a lot of copying and pasting we've got our basic structure in place now remember the product route is a child of the product so we can do that with a children property there and that's an array exactly the same structure and if we give our app a quick test we can see that everything is still working as it was and remember we've still got some JSX based routes in our product component and it's working with that so you can mix and match if you want to do that. So we've reached the end of the video. Probably the most exciting bit of React Router 6 is the routes component. It does relative matching, it does exact matching by default, although you can put a star at the end for nested routes. We've got the use navigate hook for programmatic navigation. It's all suspense ready. We've got the outlet component for nested layouts and we can do object-based routes as well with JSON. We can still do the JSX way, but we've got that alternate approach as well. I think version six is super cool. Give it a try and hope you enjoyed the video.